news is what the whole world is still talking about. And our dear Moira, I know you have been all over this <laughs> grand I announcement. Black Friday. Oh, oh yeah. No. Well, actually, south of the border, that's the big that's news the today. Big news, yeah, isn't but it? no, of course not. What are we talking about, Moira? Big hint. <laughs> April 29th. Wedding bells are going to ring, specifically Westminster Abbey's wedding bells. Uh, the long-awaited official engagement and wedding day announcement mm -hmm. for Prince William, Kate Middleton. And, you know, the whole world, of, the economy in Britain is in the pits. Uh, so they need some sparkle. And there's so much bad news in the rest of the world. We need a little fairy tale, don't we? A little royal pomp. <laughs> we do, we do. But you know what? This grand announcement has prompted a fresh look at the state of marriage, or should I say society's perception of marriage. Mm. Uh, the, the latest edition of Time magazine asks the question, who needs marriage? And there's quite a lengthy article in it that we've all been discussing today. Who wants to get started on this one? Well, I, I, I do think it's interesting with the whole William and Kate, um, or Catherine maybe we should be calling her, um, <laughs> with this whole announcement. It's one of the angles that they've been really looking at is how different marriage is from when you know, Lady Di and Prince Charles got married in, that was almost 30 years ago, to today. Um, you have a couple who've been living together, who, you know, they're in their late 20s. Uh, uh, she has a university degree. This is like kind of the new picture of cohabiting and marriage. And, I mean, yeah. As I was reading the article, there's a, there's a, lot, there's a lot in this article, and some of it's good, some of it's bad, and some of it's ugly. Um, yeah, I don't know if so much as, as we need to say, well, this is the state of marriage, as much as, like I said earlier, society's perception of marriage. I mean, marriage all along was God's idea, and I still think it's the best idea. To, to raise a family, to uh, spend your remaining years with mm -hmm. someone that's your soulmate. Um, but society in general, we know that we can't trust our own you know, whims uh, here and there. And with something as precious as marriage, it's, it, it's interesting to see our perception, but that's not really the state of marriage. Yeah. Let's pick up on that stat that you alluded to, Denise. Uh, in 1960, the year before Princess Diana uh, was born, was born, nearly 70% of American adults were married, 70% married. Now only about half are. Mm -hmm. Eight times as many children are born out of wedlock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's largely because the taboos around that, around that have really, uh, have lessened, let's be totally honest, right? I mean, the article even states the fact that, you know, um, now it's, it's, not, it's not so taboo for people to be cohabitating before they're married. It's not so taboo in particular, you know, I think particularly in the West, I don't know about other cultures, it's not as taboo to be, to bring a child into the world out of wedlock. So when you say taboo, you mean negatively thought of perceived. in society. Perceived. perceived, exactly. In society's and that's because, mindset. and I mean the stats are even here, that's because so many children are born out of wedlock, right? It's yeah. just kind of like the state of what it is. And also another thing of, that I wanted to talk about too is, you know, you talked about society's perception of marriage. Like, I, I've had conversations with people about this, but it's like my parents' generation, and I think Denise's parents' generation, were the generation of divorce. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. There's so much trickle down effect of divorce. And I think that has a lot to do with the way that marriage is perceived nowadays, right? Because so many, so many children were raised in two homes or so many children uh, were raised without fathers. And so, you know, when, when you have a society that um, is brought up in that way, when you have pretty much, I would say, two generations brought up in that way, it's bound to change the way people look at so marriage. So marriage people has gotten a bad rap. Exactly, basically. right? And so, and now people think, now people feel like, okay, well, you know, my parents weren't married or my parents got divorced and I turned out okay. So really, what is the, the, the need for marriage? I think sometimes that's the thinking behind it. There's a subtle thing with men too, and I had one man express it to me this way after living for seven years with his girlfriend. He said, uh, success is important to me and I don't want to risk failure. Mm. And to make a mm. commitment mm -hmm. of marriage and then face a broken marriage to him was um, much different than maybe having a fallout in a common But doesn't common that start from the wrong foundation? You know, Absolutely. it's all about me. It's yeah. all about, I don't want to be a, a failure. I don't want to be perceived as a failure. So I am not going to commit myself mm -hmm. to a life partner. 
uh, it's well, not commitment all about in me. and of itself as like a you know I don't even know if you should call it a character trait, but commitment in and of itself is something that I'll admit I have did not really you know my parents are still married and they are committed and they are in love and they are friends right and but that growing up was rare right like I would have people mm -hmm. growing up saying to me I would be talking about them and they'd be like oh your parents are still married and I you know I'd be like yeah you know but not realizing that that's not the norm around me right and a lot of people I think commitment just in general is something that particularly my generation we haven't really grown up with we don't really know what it is to stick it out through something that you may not like at that particular time mm -hmm. or may not be going the way you thought it was going to go mm -hmm. yeah. right so well I think we also need to talk about the economy yes. because that's a huge part of marriage and and actually if you look Look at the history of marriage. I think we've sometimes made it this romantic yeah, institution definitely. that, um, I mean, if you, I, I read a, pro, every Jane Austen novel, yeah. and in, in every <laughs> Jane Austen novel, marriage is business. Oh, yeah. It's economics. It's marrying well. It's it's acquiring wealth. It's stability. It's all of these things. That's because it was perceived from a broken foundation that a woman needed to be married to be taken mm -hmm. care of. But even if you look at the Bible, I mean, there's there are several characters in the Bible who had several wives, and they are marrying into families and into wealth. So I think this idea though of the economy of marriage has been with us from the beginning. Um, it's, it's set up as an institution to s create stability, uh, even political alliances, all of these things. So I think, you know, today, because so many women have degrees and we have the education, we don't necessarily need that ha financial instability that would be, or men or don't have the same incentives as well. So I think that has rearranged our marriage equation here. Yeah, but the thing that's interesting mm. about the article too, the article talks about the fact that, you know, marriage and um, just ec like you were saying, Denise, economics, you know, like people who are married are less likely to live below the poverty line. And that's just what the mm -hmm. data states. Right. And so it's it's very interesting as well that, um, you know, the article talked about the fact that marriage is no longer a milestone in people's lives anymore. Right. It's, you know, I think but years and I would say decades ago, it was, you know, you go to school. If you decide to go to college as a man or a woman, that's entirely up to you. If you wanted to just go into the workforce, that's up to you. You get married, you have kids, you buy a home. Those were like the stages of life. Now you have more people who are pursuing um, uh, sec the college or university and marriage is no marriage is sort of delayed because now the important thing is for you to get educated so that you can be uh, yeah exactly so you can get your career started and in fact Kate if she becomes queen will be the first ever mm -hmm. to have a university degree mm -hmm. and I'm gonna risk looking like the prude at the end of the couch <laughs> oh, um, uh, it is a C word commitment mm -hmm. and you are right it is a character quality mm -hmm. Bridget and you you won't see it immediately visibly, um, but the reality is there are rewards that will be missed if you yeah. do not do it God's way. Mm -hmm. It's a covenant, it's a commitment, and if you want it the best, and it is the best, uh, under God, you say, I do, and it's for life. And, and Moira, this is the thing about, even in all of this, in yeah. our reality, we still aspire to marriage, and I think people do see the beauty and the wonder and all of these things. It's something we still hope for, hey Bridget? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's something we still hope for, even if, our, yeah, even if our realities are different.